Okay, boys and girls, we are going to be reading a different type of genre that we've read before. We are going to be reading a play. Who here has been to a play? Yes, everybody here has been to a play. Did we get to go to a play last year? Yes, we went to a play. We went to a play at Christmas time, didn't we? In second grade, we went to a play. And has anybody ever been to a play with their family? Yes, it's so much fun to go to a play. Okay, so you've all been to a play. Now, what we're going to be doing this time is we're going to be reading some plays in this module of our book, in the set of, of different readings that we're going to be doing. So to prepare for our play, which I think you're going to enjoy very much, is, is I want to prepare us with some of the vocabulary that we're going to have in our play. So you have your paper. We're going to do our definitions, and I'm going to give you some time to draw some pictures to go along with it, okay? So our first word is the word saga. Saga. Has anybody ever heard that word before? Oh, so that's a new word for you. Sometimes we, we know all of our words. This time is a word we don't know, and that is a noun. And a saga is a long, detailed story about heroic events. So it's a, it's a long story, and there's a lot of details in it, and it's always a heroic, there's always heroic events in the story. And the story we're going to be reading this week has many heroic events in it. So everybody say saga. saga. And here's our example sentence. Greg hoped to get to the next chapter in the saga before bedtime. Do you think anybody could come up with a sentence with the word saga in it? Yes. Sometimes you read sagas, that's right. Like we could consider maybe Harry Potter a modern day saga because there's so many, he's a hero, as a matter of fact, there were many heroes in Harry Potter, as it turns out. Yes? Um, sometimes I like to read sagas. Yes, you like to read sagas. Olive. Um, on cold days, me and my friends go in my garage and we tell sagas. Oh, you tell sagas. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. You are going to... We're going to write the definition of it. Where's my pen? We're going to have to write kind of small because we don't have that many lines. So it is a noun, and this is the definition we're going to write. This is for saga, which is a long. story about heroic events. Okay. And it's got a lot of details in it. So a long detailed story about heroic events, a saga. So you get to hear a lot of details and a lot of interesting things. About a saga. Now here's a word you may know. This is the word genuine. Has anybody heard this word genuine? It's an adjective. So if something is genuine, it is real and exactly what it seems to be. Genuine, something is real, exactly what it is. So here is our example sentence. Seeing her father return filled the girl with genuine happiness. 
Sometimes on TV there will be ads for something and it'll say it's a genuine diamond or genuine gemstone. Has anybody ever seen those ads where they sell something as genuine? It's real. Genuine. I was filled with genuine joy yesterday when I didn't have to get up for school. It was nice, wasn't it? Except I still got up early. But I didn't have to get dressed for school and go out the door. So that was still nice. Okay, so even though we still got up early, we still enjoy staying home. So that filled us with genuine happiness to just kind of chill out in the morning. Genuine. Can anybody give me a sentence with genuine? Teddy. I was very genuinely happy when I woke up yesterday. Very nice. Yes. Yes. Could you use a word with genuine, a sentence with genuine, though? You got to think on it, yeah. Juliana? I'm genuine with my mom when I'm Okay. That doesn't quite use it correctly, though. Okay, you have to say, you're, you have to say, you have to be genuine, has to go in front of another word. It has to describe a word, your genuine feelings about something. Sometimes they'll say that a person is really genuine because that person is really exactly how they seem to be, okay? They're not putting on an act, okay? So let's write genuine. And that is real and exactly what it seems to be, real and exactly what it seems to be. Genuine. Our next word is the word coiled. Everybody say coiled. 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 Now coiled is a verb. Has anybody heard this word coiled? Now coiled means you shape something into loops or rings. And here we could see that the hose is coiled. Clara coiled the hose after she was finished watering the plants. So coiled. And here we could see the hose is coiled up. She did, a, she did a really good job coiling up her hose. Coiled. So, I coiled the rope so I could put it away neatly. Coiled. Can anybody think of a way we could use the word coiled? Something that's coiled? Yes. Ivy. I coiled. Sometimes you could see snakes can be coiled up. You could see, have you ever seen a snake all coiled up? That's how they say, describe snakes. Snakes will be coiled up. Libby? Okay, you gotta cover your nose. Yes. Coiled up the rope, Teddy. Yes, dogs will coil themselves up. Very good. 
So let's write coils, coils. into loops or rings. Sometimes you can have bracelets that are like coils. Have you ever seen those bracelets that are coils? Bracelets or rings that are coils. Here's our next word. The word is world. Who's ever heard this? W-H-I-R-L-E-D. It sounds like another word, but world. So I see some hands up. And it's a verb, and if something world, it spun and turned very quickly. And here we can see water. The water world in a circle under the bridge. This word reminds me of when I was young. I liked to go on the tilt Whirl. Who's been on the tilt a whirl at a carnival or festival? Yes, the tilt a whirl. It has this word in it W H I R L, whirl. You whirl around, you spin around, spins very quickly, whirls. You can see like water whirls down, the water whirl down and whirl down the drain in the sink. world. The dancer, dancers whirled around the dance floor. That's a sentence that has world in it. Can anybody think of a sentence with world? Jensen? Oh yes, you whirl in that. Or have you ever put a coin to get a gumball out and you put it in that thing and you watch it whirl around? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And it whirls, whirls, whirls before your gumball will come out? It whirls, whirls, whirls? Yes, Teddy. Um, when my dog chases the mice, the mice will run around in a circle. Oh, they whirl around, yes. Elisa? Oh wait, I'm sorry boys and girls, Elisa speaking. Yes. The tornado whirled around the ground. Yes, tornadoes whirl. That's a good one. I like it. That's an excellent example of whirling. So let's write, I'm going to put world. And it means spawn and turn very quickly. Okay, now our last word, it's on the back of your page, and it is the word tame. Tame is a verb. Have you heard the word tame before? Yes, I see some hands up. So when you tame something like a wild animal, you teach it to do what you want. So, this, here's our sentence. The trainer's job is to tame the horses by teaching them to follow commands. So if you go to like the circus, they would tame the tigers and lions to 
do tricks. That's an example of taming them. They tame them to do tricks. Or you tame your horse to do follow directions so you can ride it. Otherwise it would be wild and you could not, you would get thrown. Tame. Does anybody have a word with tame? Libby. Avery. You want to tame a fox, okay. Teddy? I want, I want a tiger as a pet so I can tame it to do tricks. Um, yes, Clark? Do you need to tame the horse for horseback riding? Yes, you need to tame the horse for horseback riding. So let's write the word tame, or the word is there for you. And I'm going to write to teach. A wild animal to do what you want. Okay, now here's what I'm going to have you do. Now you're going to draw a picture to go with your definitions. Yes. Yes, you're going to have some coloring today. 